In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whom the holy innocents confessed and proclaim on this day, not by speaking, but by dying, grant, we pray, that the faith in you which we confess with our lips may also speak through our manner of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. This is what we have heard from Jesus Christ and the message that we are announcing to you. God is light. There is no darkness in him at all. If we say that we are in union with God while we are living in darkness, we are lying because we are not living the truth. But if we live our lives in the light, as he is in the light, we are in union with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son purifies us from all sin. If we say we have no sin in us, we are deceiving ourselves and refusing to admit the truth. But if we acknowledge our sins, then God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and purify us from everything that is wrong. To say that we have never sinned is to call God a liar and to show that his word is not in us. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. The Word of the Lord Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. If the Lord had not been on our side when men rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled. Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Then would the waters have engulfed us the torrent gone over us, over our head would have swept the raging waters. Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Indeed, the snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Alleluia, alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. The noble army of martyrs praise you, O Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the wise men had left, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and escape into Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, because Herod intends to search for the child and do away with him. So Joseph got up, and taking the child and his mother with him, left that night for Egypt where he stayed until Herod was dead. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that he had been outwitted by the wise men, and in Bethlehem and its surrounding district, he had all the male children killed who were two years old or under, reckoning by the date he had been careful to ask the wise men. It was then that the words spoken to the prophet Jeremiah were fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loudly lamenting, 
It was Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you been falsely accused or wronged? I think most of us have had an experience like this, and maybe some of us just got falsely accused yesterday. And sometimes we're wondering, hmm, where's the justice? How am I going to prove myself innocent? Who is going to stand up for me and to right the wrong? Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Innocents. And actually, we're not sure whether we should celebrate it because it sounds quite terrible to celebrate these young lives, these young boys have been killed um, because of the coming of the Messiah. And we were just celebrating Christmas not so long ago and we're joyful. And today we come to a feast that's a little bit puzzling. Let's look at the situation here historically. We hear that there is a King Herod. Who was King Herod? This character was quite interesting because he was quite powerful. And in fact, he was a megalomaniac, full of himself. And probably because he was very insecure. That the more insecure he was about his position and his kingship, the more he had to take control and to expand and to destroy all those who were seemingly opposed to him or a threat to him. It was said that he was very paranoid. And even his favorite wife and the children that was born out of his favorite wife, he had them killed because they were not pure Jews and he had to make sure that those from his line were supposed to be pure. And so you can imagine that if he's able to kill his own wife and children, it is not surprising that he actually killed um, these boys that were under two years old uh, because that would have been the age that Jesus would have been. And this is done out of fear. Sometimes fear grips many of us and causes us to do very strange and sometimes destructive things. But we can say that all is not lost. That the church recognizes these lost lives, these lost young lives that have been sacrificed because of our Lord Jesus. And so nothing is lost to God. God knows. And there are many of us who are probably silently suffering, innocently suffering. But if we can unite our suffering with our Lord Jesus Christ, who was also sacrificed innocently, if we're able to do this and not to allow other people's fears, paranoia, darkness to invade our own light, joy and peace, if we can do so, tapping onto the grace and mercy of God, then ultimately the victory is God's. And with confidence that God hears us, let us now pray in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, abundant salvation to your faithful, as they receive your holy gifts. On the feast day of these, your saints, who, though still unable to profess your Son in speech, were crowned with heavenly grace on account of his birth, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.